Can you say hi in case he's gone? Just to <clears throat> Did they have a confirmatory? I don't see it in here. Yeah, no. Are they can did they confirm? No. What percentage of people confirm, Tori, that will actually show up? Most? Um it's really fifty fifty. Some people instead of responding to the email, they then just accept that meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <coughs> have have numbers numbers yeah, that's it. They're not even like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, they're not like that. Yeah. That's right. Oh, that, we do. Sorry. We do. We do. We do. Okay. Give them, yeah, seven five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. yeah. Just to, Just make, to sure make sure, you know, you know because they have, they have anything a meeting at the, uh, the middle, middle of the hour. And obviously, Tori, on your own, to contact Adrian Tennant or whatever. Obviously, you can just do that on your own. What? I'm saying you already plan to reach out and say, hey, Nancy, refer to me. So. To Adrian? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And be as blunt as you can with it, almost implying, like, you know, Nancy, more than just giving me a contact, you know, if you can think of 
No, I get that she said, but what did you send Adrian? I'm just saying when you send it to the Adrian. That's what I just said. I said I when I sent it to her, I said Nancy Rebel has on her contact info. I think that's where the contact is. Hello? 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 Hi, this is Dan. Hi, Dan. It's uh, Patrick and I Nad with Itco. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Pretty good. Yeah. Are we still waiting on uh, Ryan on your end? In my notes, I was told I'm supposed to be. Yeah, waiting. we are. I uh, I just sent him an instant message and he's not responding. So, okay. um, and really, the purpose of this meeting was so uh, he could look at it and uh, kind of get a feel as what it was for. Yeah, that was it. Uh, last we spoke, it was basically just gave you an overview, and you said uh, I'd have to show it to my analytics guy, basically, because he's who deals with that. And it sounds like that's Ryan, right? Mm -hmm. um, are you guys in the same office by chance, or what is your? Are you guys? Uh, I don't know if your company's in one location. Or... No, I'm in. I'm in St. Louis, and he's in Columbia. No problem. Yeah, we'll give them a few minutes. It's not a problem. Um, how's your day other than that? Uh, it's going pretty good. Um, I'm actually uh, I'm in the St. Louis office because I uh, broke my ankle a couple weeks ago. What happened? So, uh, uh, it was a Mardi Gras casualty. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's probably uh, it's PG-13. So it's, about, it's about as much detail as I can go into, but... Uh, <laughs> Do you go to Mardi Gras usually, or was it a first-time thing? Uh, yeah, it's every year. It's uh, St. Louis has like one of the, is like the second biggest Mardi Gras. Oh, a St. Louis Mardi. Now I've been to uh, I've been to St. Louis uh, multiple times. I've never been to Mardi Gras. So you're talking about uh, St. Louis Mardi Gras? Yeah. Yep. How long does so that? Where last? are you from then? I'm uh, we're in San Diego. I'm originally from Michigan area, but uh, right now we're in San Diego. I don't know if you know the area or not, but La Jolla. No. So are uh, we just so are we just uh, waiting him out basically a few minutes to see he was supposed to make it, and you're seeing if he uh, responds or if he's busy. Yeah, he's not. He's not responding to me. It looks like he's got a a way thing on. I yes. might have just forgotten. No problem. Uh, on that note, yeah, do you have any other thoughts? I mean, basically where we were at last last time we spoke, and long story short, your question was how can we position this, how we can make it profitable is going to depend on Ryan. And uh, you had interest in integrations with media, buying, and ad generation, because that's any, has anything changed in center? Is that basically where you're still at? Yeah, I mean, I think... Uh... And I know one of our big things moving forward is going to be like uh, attribution and how we can uh, properly attribute sales and leads and things to to different ads, uh, you know, correctly and the right the right percentage and all that deal. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if that was something that this could help with, then that might be something we could consider. But. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. The, the main point about this technology that's usually, and I mean, all of these technologies, it's hard to introduce in a few minutes and get into the differentiators and you know deeper capabilities. But for anything advertising-wise, we we have a firm source, and we're just basically breaking up any visitor into more segments than any other product. So if you break someone down into more segments, more demographics, more behavioral actions, it applies directly when it comes to advertising to obviously um, you know to discover a new niche in that regard and to break up a certain segment to be more profitable over and over. So from a data sourcing standpoint, that's a uh, practical use, but it, it all depends how you're, what you guys are doing basically behind the scenes. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you ever send me like a, your, your deck? I'm pretty sure I don't have in front of me. I'm confident. I believe uh, James, I, I can send you a deck if need be. If it sounds like at this point in time, if uh, Ryan doesn't look he's going to be on, it might be better to send you a deck and uh, try to see if we can yeah. get Ryan on the call and see if uh, see if there was an issue. 
Yeah, yeah, if I can go ahead and get a deck, I don't see you in my... Yeah, I don't see you in my vendor folder. No problem. I'll uh, I'll get a deck out to you then after we're off the call. I think that'd work. Uh, do you know? I don't know if you can you schedule on his behalf. My calendar is pretty open on uh, Thursday afternoon, Friday morning. Do you guys is that something that we'd have to go through him? Um, hold on one sec. No problem. Thursday afternoon. Yeah, I mean, I, we could probably do Friday morning. Friday morning. Um, let me see. What, what, remind me, what time zone are you guys in St. Louis? Uh, Central. Central time zone. Friday morning, does uh, noon work for you? Either 11 a.m. or noon CST? It looks like Ryan's calling in. Yes. All right, we'll give him a couple minutes then. Yeah, and even if it's uh, inconvenient for him, yeah, we could always reschedule. We'll see, so. I'm sure he just was, took a late lunch. Yeah, <laughs> the norm, yes. <laughs> Try to guess. No problem. Hey, guys, it's Ryan. Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. No problem. Hey, Ryan. Drinking lunch today? Is that what you're doing? Uh, that is what I was doing. <laughs> How'd you know? So, hey, Ryan, it's uh, Patrick with UPCO. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good. Just, uh, yeah, typical Monday. Just getting around to the week, so. Uh, I feel you. So, to give some uh, context to this uh, conversation, Ryan, I had uh, spoke to Dan before. I uh, introduced a analytics and competitive intelligence technology. And the uh, long story short of the takeaway was that you're the guy who should be the one to take a look yourself. Uh, yeah, me and Dan both uh, are sort of analytics leads um, for the agency, I guess. Um, so yeah, I got your screen share up. I'd All right, like give me a minute. And we'll, so. and to let you know, uh, this conversation promised is basically a 15-minute capability overview, show you a few different views and screens, and uh, basically go from there and see if there's uh, interest and any other uh, challenges you have from there, so. Sure. No problem. Could you, uh, could you remind me, you know, I have truemediaservices.com as the website up. You guys had a more, did you guys have a more relevant website last time I remember? Uh, no. That's it. Sure. No, that's us. That's our, that's our site. <laughs> no problem. Well, and, it's not relevant? No, I thought you had, I thought you had mentioned another website that you guys were working on. I probably got things confused, so. No problem. So, all right, Ryan, uh, once again, what, what I'm going to be showing you guys, just a couple of capabilities based on analytics. Um, num number one, I'll say for any website, our main differentiators is we're storing about a thousand times as much information about each individual customer session. What that means is as opposed to just getting quantitative data saying this is where someone on my site went, we're able to dig deeper and get someone's typing speed their behavior and movements around call to actions, such as if someone hesitated for three seconds before buying something on your site, you would be able to pick that up as a pattern over all of your traffic. So that's the long story short of um, how our data differs, is just storing the entire customer experience. The other end of that coin is because we're storing all of that data, we're able to replay all of it like a playable video from every module within our analytics. So what you're seeing here would be if you're taking a look at a particular uh, visitor or segment on your website, you would be able to click play and see exactly what they did to get the complete experience from the eyes of your customers. Hmm. I, I, what, what do you uh, use most often, Ryan or Dan? What are you guys currently using, basically, to take a look at what's happening on your site? Google Analytics. Yeah, that's really all That's all you use, okay. Um, I'm trying to expand on that a little bit more, but um, it's free and it's there. And yeah, absolutely. It's pretty powerful. No, it's not, you know, um, I'm trying to learn a little bit more about Omniture and uh, 
core metrics, um, but we don't have any clients that use that currently. Um, but it, um, we are 100% on the, the GA bandwagon at this point. Yeah, that's uh, most of our clients, I'll say, do use in conjunction. Yeah, the omnitures, the core metrics, I mean, it basically lets you manipulate your data in a lot of more ways. So I'll just mention on our case, the biggest, uh, the bigger note there is they're not really doing much different on the source level. They have a lot more ways to slice and dice your data, but the differentiator here where we talk about storage is all just every movement point as a metric, you know. Plain and simple is just being able to dig deep into movement points and everything you see on your site. If you say how many people are doing this, you don't need to wonder whether or not it's stored. It's there. So, sure. So the other uh, other side of this coin that's usually pretty relevant to any uh, agency is when we say we do this for every customer, regardless of device. This is just an example of um, how that applies to mobile. Um, a lot of people say, including us, you know, no one's really figured out mobile yet. What's the value of mobile monetizing mobile traffic versus non? We're still kind of figuring it out while people are figuring out their phones. So uh, what we're showing here is an example for mobile. Obviously, someone's on your side and they're using their fingers to navigate in most mobile instances. So what you're going to be see here is the actual finger rotation and movement on a mobile device. And... Uh, the other point here that's relevant is uh, the orange and blue is differentiating the first finger from the second because that actually matters quite a lot from uh, what we've seen for, you know, trying to bring people to your site. So that's what's going to be shown here in a few seconds. So is this just for apps, or are you recording this information from browsers as well? Yeah, browsers, correct. Browsers by default, apps uh, apps take a bit of uh, customization, but the browsers is for default for every <coughs> So just basically looking at your traffic and then clicking play on instances of, you know, mobile versus not. It's going to replay. It's going to re replay accurately either way. So. All right. Um, so how does... Um, so what are you doing to track? Like, you know, is there some type of cookie that, I mean, what's running in the in the background of the site that's allowing you to record all this information? Long story short, it's almost identical to Google Analytics. It's a piece of JavaScript. Um, our load is less than Google Analytics on norm, around 200 milliseconds. And the, what we're doing is we're recording all of the information through basic JavaScript and then replaying that. So it's not, uh, it doesn't require any download on the user's end. There's no intrusiveness in that regard because of the way that we're storing and replaying. So you guys wouldn't have to change your privacy. It, it, because we're not storing anything aside from general cookies and a JavaScript, it's not any more intrusion on your end. So that's usually the biggest question people have is, you know, am I going to have to install a lot of things on my client's end? So that's the... Uh, that's the differentiator here with the technologies. There's a lot of ways to do this. If right now we're using TeamViewer because you downloaded something on your site, you know, this is doing it all non-intrusively for all of your customers. So, sure. Any other questions you want me to? What, what basically from here, you know, that's the core capability. Just show you a few particular views um, in practical use cases. Do you have any other questions aside from that? Or? Um, I'll chime in if I think of something. No problem. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, what this is, is uh, you guys are an agency, so I'll take a step back here and say uh, we do have this agency view, assuming that you guys are managing multiple sites. You can choose the site of interest. From here, the big uh, differentiator, as I said before, is any piece of data you usually want to look at. We can we can define all of this data a lot more uh, specific. If you wanted to create a metric for your site, our step one for any company is creating what their six most important metrics are. These are kind of the default, but if you wanted to create a metric that says people who left our site for this reason, that could be listed in any of these views. We have a lot of flexibility over the data source in that regard. Um, what I'm going to be showing you here is just how deep you can get into a particular segment. So right here I clicked on a particular segment. In this case I'm looking at traffic that came from Google, basically came from Google. 
From our views, you can look at this information on a page-specific basis. So if you actually had 50 people coming from Google, you would see a different, you'd see 50 different records of each, uh, each traffic source. If you, wanted to, uh, if you wanted to look at the amount of people who led to those 50 different pages, and that was only, let's say, five people, this view would also show, team viewer isn't blowing up my server, give me one second. So from this view here, so assuming this number was 50 for the number of people who went to this page, you can seamlessly go back and forth to the session or customer level. So in this case, the customer level would only show the amount of people who led to these pages from this view. Does that make sense? Are you? Yeah, it does. Okay. So that's just a little uh, usability differentiators. Anytime you go into a segment, you can see from these different views. From here, you would be able to play the data directly and basically play the session through, through to see what happened. Or if you wanted to take a closer look at a particular visitor, um, I could click View Details. I'm going to pull up a faked example that has a bit more history on our end. Um, so assuming that this person so I chose... Just a random number generator, just a random number generator for the user, I'm assuming. Yeah, random number generator can be aligned to your site information if you have it, or it's anonymous user for if you don't. So, so in this case, uh, the difference here is this view is the entire history of that user. This is stored for every visitor on your site. So in this case, it's just, you know, I guess a larger player to be able to see what that user did. And you, it's directly linked to all of their past history. So if this is an anonymous user who's visited 84 times, relevant example here, made five purchases, came from here, you know, did, did whatever you basically <coughs> choose as your important data, you would have this whole history synced from one screen. You wouldn't have to, you know, go around to different dashboards and say, am I looking at page analysis versus customer analysis? You have all the information at once. So that was the main point of this kind of transgression to realize it's pretty seamless to go from view to view. You don't have 8,000 dashboards to kind of uh, have you say, oh, did this person come from mobile? We threw all the information from each view. So, so, so each user is really each device in this. There's really no way to link like the, you know, my, my cell phone with my browser at this point, I'm assuming. Well, I mean, the, the way to do that is by, de you're bringing up, um, I mean, IP is the default definition of each customer when we're linking the IP. Yeah. IP and cookie is That's the two ways that we do seamlessly. Um, when it comes down to that problem that everyone in the world wants to try to solve that you just mentioned, yeah. linking that. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. It just comes down to using any identifier on your uh, on your site. It's not going to be 100%, but if you guys use any kind of login or identifier, you know, to we're using the same rules that are kind of out there. So, but we do have the um, we do have the flexibility to adjust to the firmest definition. So, if you said, "Hey, in our case, IPs are going to be more relevant than cookies," or using a login, we're able to adjust that in all these definitions. So, so, so mm -hmm. um, how have other advertisers been able, you know, used? I mean, eighty-four past customer sessions, you know, as an agency with, you know, a lot of uh, clients, um, you know, that's kind of granular to get to. You know, I mean, how have you seen people utilizing those customer sessions and what insights have they been able to pull by having the ability to kind of go back on a replay? Well, the, you, you know, the no-brainer is usually usability. If someone wants to say, for instance, they weren't aware of a responsive design issue, they weren't aware that they just launched their site and what it looks like from a mobile phone, or just, mm -hmm. you know, um, Using, are you familiar with conversion funnels, Ryan? Yes, I am. So I'm, that's probably the best example to answer this question. So I'll tell you, we have about uh, 20 other modules in here. I don't get too deep in these examples. But the number one way that people use this to discover insight is usually a typical conversion funnel. You have someone go on a side and you say, okay, people are, th these are the number of customers abandoning. You know, I know this number. Mm -hmm. I got to go back to the drawing board and figure out why. Why, why are these people abandoning? How do I fix this process? In this case, we have it all linked to the session level. So you won't want to look at all of your traffic, but you're going to want to look at the problems you're looking to solve. So uh, in this case here, it was an example of on our company's end internally, you know, we, we, looked at a, uh, we looked at a conversion process, and of course the technical people say it's not our fault, everything functions. We press play. We see that there was a website-specific error caused by a particular environment. So that lets us go back. The next step here would be to search how many other 
environments, you know, look at this session details and say how many other people were using X or Y. Let's search through and see if that same error came up. So that's just, you know, the practical way to use this is deeper insight. So. And you said this gets, I mean, obviously it's going to be quite a, quite a more, a lot more data. Um, Who owns, the, you know, the data that comes from from your platform and, how, and where is it stored and uh, how is that kind of, you know, database issue resolved? So you own it. Yeah, that's a big issue because Google had switched recently to not let people. Uh, you guys own the data completely. By default, we're hosting it as a standalone solution on our servers, but you also have the option of hosting that internally. Um, when it comes to data retention, by default, we have it at six months, but that is completely adjustable as well. Some companies are only looking for active traffic for a week. Others are looking for, you know, forever, basically. So all of that yeah. is uh, adjustable on our own variable, depending on how long you want it. So. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I am in my development view. I usually give someone a heads up beforehand just for a couple things I'm not supposed to... Uh, one more point I'll mention, Ron. This is the you know the practical use for agencies, particularly with this data. It's uh, it's hard with this pro with this uh, type of product. The biggest question is how do we use all this extra data and how does it correlate to you know actual results and ROI? Um, sure. what, what I'm showing you here, this is not going to be the greatest example for you guys, but that'll. This is an example. Our step one as a company. Let's say you guys were interested in either um, trying out a pilot on our end or moving forward. Our step one here would be to prove to you would be to prove to you an example of you guys would highlight the highest the highest uh, a high value portion of your site and we would we would be putting ten hours internally coming up with the most relevant statistics to solve the issue you brought up. So in this case here, um, this was a banking you know we signed NDAs we can't give client names but this is a made up scenario of a banking client who told us that their problem was they wanted more insight into who's filling out their wealth management forms and they wanted to be able to upsell a higher percentage. You know, that, that simple. They said, this is what I care about, this is our company's goal. So what we were able to do here is we were able to come up with metrics um, defined as confidence, saying that if someone makes multiple choices before clicking submit, we're going to label their confidence if they made three choices as 33% in what their wealth level was. Mm -hmm. We were also able to store and correlate, you know, I, I don't know how clear it was, if someone writes information on your email form and has an error, we store that information anyway. So we're able to replay all of the abandoned history of the form entry to basically know where people are stopping and to change the form around to stop that. So that's... This and, 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 ha and having that recorded doesn't, have it, doesn't violate any privacy concern with certain websites or uh, you Pass. Know, like, like you, you know I mean it's, it's <laughs> I, 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 I've known that you know websites are obviously you know detecting a lot of information on you I never realized that there was a potential of having an online recording of every uh, you know click and mistake that I, I might be, be making on there it's just uh, kind of blown me away a little bit that that's not a uh, that some privacy group isn't, you know, up in arms about it. Yeah, so uh, by default, we do have selective recordings. We're not allowed to store passwords, and we're not allowed to store credit card information by default. Sure. I'll tell you, sure. quite a few clients have other portions of their site, particularly in the medical or insurance industry, that they say, we're not supposed to see this, so you're not allowed to store it beforehand. So we, I'll tell you, in most cases, contact forms, um, it's it's really not much intrusion. It's all kind of common sense. If you knew that someone messed up, you know, if I give you a video camera and you put it in your bathroom, a problem's on your end. If someone has a problem on their site where they actually need help and you feel confident to contact them, you wouldn't assume that they filled out the form, though. You would send them an email and say, hey, guys, saw you had interest in our site you know, directly. That's, that's the usual use there. Or just saying, look, a lot of people from China have been filling out the site. We need to target them better. So you have that capability, how you yeah. use it is going to yeah. be your call. So Interesting. Um, the last piece of that segment I hadn't brought up, yeah, the last solution is in order to upsell clients, common, this, this is how stuff works once you have this more data storage to answer a question. Is um, We created a custom label, a custom metric for every time if a client said they had 500K plus in assets, then they chose a lower number afterwards. We're going to label those as higher upsell target. 
because common sense, if I'm ordering food at a restaurant and I order a burger for $20, then I change to a salad for 10 there's a pretty good chance I have $20 in my pocket. You know, so um, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's the way to use this extra data, but it always comes down to customizing to certain processes and say, you know, usual retail sales conversion or whatever your KPI is. So, so what, what type of industries and what type of clients have you had the most success, um, you know, with these kind of advanced engagement, you know, or having a total picture like this? Is there any, I mean, obviously at banking on and financial services on here, but is there any... I guess e-commerce, I'm sure, would be yeah. another example. Um, is there any other <coughs> insights that you've seen, maybe for branding campaigns, that you've uh, that have had success with the additional data? I mean, everyone. Yeah, of course, the retail is kind of the no-brainer. E-commerce on the closing process on forms. Um, when it comes to branding, yeah, we've had success, but it's it's hard to. If you want to give me an example, maybe it's hard to, you know, explain it in a broad way. It usually comes down to detecting insight for the first three-month period to say, what don't we know? And then, you know, if your current form, if you have a contact form, you don't know how many people have been filling out a third of it and leaving. You really don't know until you've detected it. You know, so that's usually our starting yeah. point. Do you want to bring up a couple scenarios, see if I can help that with uh, Brian for what your guys' um, points are? Well, we have a lot of, yeah, I mean, honestly, there's, a decent amount of, and this is an issue that we have with a lot of campaigns, is kind of figuring out for pure branding plays that don't have uh, an acquisition or um, an e-commerce, you know, something like a health, like a hospital website, um, you know, even with with our clients trying to figure out what, what the KPIs that we want to focus on uh, outside of just, you know, producing traffic, um, you know, and I guess trying to tease out which um, you know what's most effective with um, with engagement. You know, I mean, part of it for me, the way that I use analytics is I, you know, put tags on all of the placements, um, you know, of where I'm placing ads, and it's trying to deduce how people, how the each of those placements, what quality of traffic they're bringing, you know, how engaged the users that click on those ads and come through. Um, you know how long they're staying. You know, pretty pretty basic. Uh, you know, engagement metrics. Um, I mean, that's kind of all I have to go on for a lot of the for a number of our uh, you know pure pure branding plays that don't have any real goal or conversion or any anything like that. Dan, what, didn't you don't you feel like that's kind of a common concern for our branding clients, not really knowing what to measure? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, that's always a challenge. I mean, other than uh, other than the obvious ones, you know, uh, time on site, increased brand search, uh, and the like. But. So yeah, I can answer. I, I think this might uh, that might hit home on the answer. Um, so the one example I can think of to answer when you say branding is for publishing type. Uh, newsroom type clients, what they're usually looking for is a clearer, a more precise definition of engagement for their site. Because what they're looking for is if you're advertising from 50 different pay-per-click words, different kind of campaigns, they wanted more insight into the value of all those visits because they don't have revenue behind that. So if you have, yeah. in those cases, what we do is basically customize a metric saying, if someone moved on my page for five seconds and scrolled, you know, a third down the page, that means that's someone who's actually interested in reading what I had to say. That's the long story short there is we would create that as a metric and we also have a built-in tagging system and all kinds of uh, segmentation to be able to say, okay, do we want to use this new advertising source? I see that it got us a thousand hits. Awesome, a thousand hits, you know. There's a lot of behind the scenes there's a lot of behind the scenes when it comes to advertising resource to how hard people are incentivized and to know how hard they are to actually complete what you want them to do. So that would be, you know, the simple answer that we, we do define engagement more detailed by movement. We have a default metric to define yeah. engagement by basically how much someone moves on the site versus their total visit. So that's just an example of how to solve those problems and know you have the capability to define those in our case. And once you define them, you don't want to keep redefining them. A lot of it's common sense. So. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. 
So let me uh, ask you guys one more question. I'm not sure we showed this, Dan. Are either of you guys, uh, you know, we also have a built-in competitive intelligence uh, view to this whole thing, which is basically a large search engine that tells you what your competitors are doing and what's successful. Is that something um, relevant to either of you guys? I don't know if it's outside yeah. of your analytics or... Yeah, yeah I think it would definitely be something that would be useful. You guys have any more questions? Yeah, usually you show you know a few minutes here. Uh, any more questions about the analytics? You can show the other side, or I'll uh, show the other side. No problem. It's because we have about fifty-fifty with people who are utilizing both of these simultaneously or individually. So, um, so long story short, when it comes to competitive intelligence, most mainstream search engines. Do you guys use anything by chance? I didn't ask. Are you guys using any kind of uh, tools right now to kind of monitor what's going on? Yeah, we're using a, we use a Quizio. I'm sorry, you use a Clivio? A Quizio. Oh, Quizio. Okay. Yeah, I'm not terribly. Um, but I'll say uh, what we do is we have uh, we have an index with every website on the internet that we basically stored all of the information you see on a page. Their default source code. And through this, you know, this is approximately uh, five times as many websites as Bing and Google combined because all of those search engines are basically putting the liability on the website owner to enter into the search engine. We created our own process that basically every time a website gets registered, we're grabbing the information and we're getting all of the keywords and you know all of the trends that you can basically deduce from that. So a uh, sample deliverable here, what we're doing for companies is if you want to highlight a few particular competitors, and we wanted to monitor the traffic rank, which is by default on a weekly basis, but that can be applied every hour if you want. You take a look at your competitors, you take a look at the changes in traffic, as well as the changes made directly on their page, which includes, you know, all of their social media. Did they get 10,000 Facebook likes this last month? Look, they also got 40% increase in traffic. There's probably a correlation there. Hey, should we look into Facebook likes? Um, if you see a decrease in traffic, you might say, look, there was headline changes by this particular client. Instead of saying go mobile, they used another random term instead of mobile. And it just kind of gives you automated awareness of what your competition's doing. Um, the last piece before questions I usually bring up is usually we'll have someone outline a few competitors, and you'll also want to define your industry in a broader spectrum. So in you guys' case, if you wanted to define your industry as media strategy, every website using media strategy that's been registered for three years, let's say. We would be able to tag all of those domains individually and give you information such as what's their average page load speed, has it increased the last month, what are the new technologies being used. So that's the uh, long story short if you guys have any questions on. That's interesting. I think it could be useful. So, uh, so I'll just say, yeah, that's uh, built into the same module as the analytics. I'm trying to get in the right screen. It's uh, Long story short, it's all linkable from the same screen. If I was in the correct module, this overview would link to get competitive intelligence. So that's kind of the premise of practical use. And uh, for agencies, another detail I hadn't uh, mentioned that's been very popular in our case is agencies, we can also export all these videos. So a lot of agencies, what they're doing is, to be honest, if they're not even using the videos in every day in a lot of cases, what they're doing is showing their clients that they have cool technology that validates the recommendations and points. I don't know how you guys work, but we can export and attach the videos and all of this data on other formats. So if someone says you guys have a problem with mobile, it goes a lot further when they can show an example. The clients are like, wow, oh, how did I you mean, do that? I, and I, I don't think we would use it just to show off how fancy we are, <laughs> but yeah. if there was actionable insight that we needed to bring to the client, um, that, you know, that video might, might be a good reinforcer for, um, that could be something that's useful. Um, and then, you know, <clears throat> I was also interested in hearing about your fee structure um, as well, is this a CPM basis or yeah. uh, flat fee? So our fee structure is set up. We have a uh, we have a licensing fee. We have a hard setup cost. And actually, not a hard setup cost. The hard the setup cost is hard in most cases. It's an hourly fee. And we also, aside from that, our pricing is based on a variable monthly. 
So first, our uh, variable monthly pricing is based on page views, where if you're under 50,000 page views, that's at $750 a month. Our upfront on average is between 15 to 20 hours set up. For agencies, that's at $150 an hour. So those are, uh, I actually have my notes. I had uh, waived the licensing last time we spoke, so I wanted to get into there. So we're bringing that up. So in our case, the two hard costs you have is 15 to 20 hours set up and then 750 a month uh, per domain. Per domain? Yeah. That's on a per domain basis, but if we have multiple domains, um, we give discounts. For agencies, most cases, are going to have quite a few up front. We do give bulk discounts. The hours are going to be significantly less on that case. So you can bulk your vari you can group your variable traffic for domains. The hard cost is the setup because it does require on our end about a three to five week window per site. The videos aren't completely out of the box. So. Okay, interesting. Well, could you send me uh, yeah, per domain? I'm sorry. Saying? Go ahead. Did you say fifteen to twenty hours per domain? Yeah. That's the default, 15 to 20 hours per domain. But if we do bulk deals, that's going to be significantly less. We're going to have quite a few implementation people working uh, in unison as opposed to having to set it on schedule. So, okay. I thought I, I think I remembered last time you were saying it was like for the agency thing. It was, um, I guess, I guess that doesn't include setup, but it was $500 a month per yeah. domain. I hadn't mentioned uh, agency rate as well. I was going to attach that to you. For your agency, I mean, agency, we're looking to basically sell this to your clients as well. So our one, we have a 250 and 750 is starting point non-agency. Your guys' case, that would be 500 monthly for 50K range and 150 hourly for the hard, hard setup. <laughs> so that was about to transition there. So um, I can definitely send you that information in a doc. Is there any other information? Yeah. I guess any other questions you have on your end? I mean, if you could send the capabilities deck as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, you guys, would you guys have interest on in both? Do you want information trimmed only to the analytics or the competitive intelligence as well? Um, probably both. Probably right. both. All right. I guess uh, any other questions on your guys' end, or is that basically where we're at? I'll send you the follow-up and see where it sits you guys. Hey Dan, are you at? Uh, do you have an extension in the St. Louis? I mean, I mean, you're the desk that you programmed yourself. So, what, what's the extension for that? I don't know. I'll I'll let you know when I. Because you're on the phone. Okay, I'll I'll figure it out. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Right, thank nice you. talk to you guys. I'll uh, send you a follow-up. Thank you. Right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.